Hey guys, welcome back to Los Angeles. Lisa Martin coming to you live from KubeCon and CloudNativeCon North America 2021. Very excited to be here. This is our third day of back-to-back -back coverage on theCUBE, and we've got a couple of guests, CUBE alumni, joining me remotely. Please welcome Parasar Kodadi, Senior Consultant Product Marketing at Dell Technologies, and David Noy, VP of Product Management at Dell Technologies. Gentlemen, welcome back to the program. Thanks, Thank John. So Parsar, let's go ahead and start with you. Let's talk about what Dell EMC is offering to developers today in terms of unstructured data. Absolutely, Lisa. Great to be here. So let me start with the container storage interface. This is KubeCon. And a couple of years ago, the container storage interface uh, was still in beta and uh, the storage vendors were very enthusiastically kind of building the plugins into their different storage portfolio to offer enterprise grade features to developers um, uh, building applications on the Kubernetes platform. And today, uh, if you look at the Dell EMC storage portfolio, uh, be it block volumes, NAS shares, S3 object APIs, VMware virtual volumes, however you're consuming storage, you have the, uh, the plugins that are required to run your applications with these enterprise grade features, be it writable snapshots, data replication, all available in the Kubernetes layer. And just this week at KubeCon, we announced the container storage modules, which is kind of the next step of uh, productivity for developers, um, be it you know, uh, in terms of observability of the storage metrics, using tools like Prometheus, visualizing it in Grafana, uh, authorization uh, capabilities so that you know, Kube admins can have better resource management on the storage that is being consumed. Um, uh, uh, so there are these multiple modules we have released. And if you look at unstructured data, this term may be a bit new for, or, or kind of uh, not very familiar for developers, but basically in the storage world, you know, there is a distinction that is being made you know, between primary storage and unstructured uh, storage or unstructured data solutions. And by unstructured, we mean file and object storage. Uh, if you look at the KubeCon technical sessions, I was very glad to see that there is an entire stream for um, machine learning and data. So that speaks to how popular Kubernetes uh, deployment models are getting when it comes to machine learning and artificial intelligence, um, even uh, applications like genomics and media and entertainment. And with the container storage interface uh, and the container storage modules, um, with the, uh, the object storage uh, portfolio that Dell has, we offer the comprehensive uh, unstructured data solutions for developers, be it object or file. And, and the advantage you know, the developers are getting is these, you know, if you look at platforms like PowerScale and ECS, these are like the industry workhorses with the you know, highest performance. And, and if you think of scale, you know, think of 250 NAS nodes, you know, with a single namespace with NVIDIA GPU direct uh, capabilities. Uh, all these capabilities developers can use um, for, you know, applications like machine learning or any computationally intensive or data intensive application uh, that requires uh, these NAS, um, uh, scale out NAS platforms. So, so um, that's, that's what is new uh, in terms of uh, what we are offering in terms of storage features, uh, Lisa. Got it, Parasar, thank you. David, let's bring you into the conversation now. You sure. launched Object Scale at VMworld. Talk to us about that, what some of the key features and capabilities are, and some of those big business benefits that customers are going to be able to achieve. Sure thing. So, you know, I really want to focus on three of the biggest benefits. Um, and these would be the fact that the, the product is actually based on Kubernetes control, <coughs> uh, the scale of the product, and then its ability to do global replication. So let me just touch on those in order. Uh, you said that the product is, is based on Kubernetes, and here we are at KubeCon, so it's a perfect time to be talking about that. Uh, this product really caters to those who are looking for a flexible uh, way to deploy object storage in a containerized fashion. It appeals to the DevOps folks and folks who like to automate things and call the Kubernetes APIs to make uh, uh, the actual deployment of the product very simple and turnkey. And that's really what people turn to Kubernetes for is the ability to spin things up when they need them and spin them down as they don't and make that all on commodity hardware and commodity uh, uh, you know, commodity pricing. And the idea there is that by making it as simple and easy as possible, 
you're not going to get as much shadow IT. You won't have people going off and putting things off into a public cloud. And so where security of an organization or control of the data that flows within an organization is important, um, having something that's easy for developers to use in the same paradigm that they're used to is critical. Now I talked about scale and, you know, if you would have come to me two years ago, I would have told you, you know, Kubernetes, yeah, containers, people are kicking it around and they're doing some interesting science experiments. I would say in the last year, I started to see a lot of requests from customers um, in the dozens, even to 100 petabyte range as it relates to capacity for Kubernetes and, uh, and specifically looking for CSI and COSI, which is, which is the, the um, object storage implementation of the container storage interfaces. Uh, so, so scale is definitely there. And the idea of this product is to provide easy scalability from the terabytes range into the multi-petabyte range. And again, it's that ease of use, that ease of deployment because it is Kubernetes based and because it's so API driven that makes that possible. So we're talking about going from a three node minimum to thousands of nodes. And this allows people to deploy the product either at the edge or in the data center. Um, in the edge because you can get very small deployments of the data center to massive scale. So we want to provide something that covers that gamut. The last thing I talked about was replication. So let me just touch upon what I mean by that. Uh, when people go and build these deployments, if you're building a deployment at the edge of an object scale product, you're probably taking in sensor data or some kind of information that you want to then send back to a data center for processing. So you make it simple to do bucket based replication, uh, an object based, sorry, object storage basic based replication to move things to another location. And uh, that can be used either for bringing data back for analytics from the edge, it can be used for availability, so making sure that you have data available across multiple data centers in the case that you have an outage. It could be even used for sharing data between developers in one site and another site. So we provide that level of flexibility. Overall, um, this is a next generation object store, uh, leveraging, you know, Dell Technologies' number one position in object storage. So I'm pretty excited about it. And how, David, is object scale integrated with the VMware software stack? Give us that slice and dice. Yeah, and, and that's a, a good question. And so, you know, we're talking about this being a Kubernetes-based product. You can deploy it on OpenShift, or we integrate directly with VMware Cloud Foundation and with Tanzu, which is VMware's uh, container uh, orchestration and management platform. Um, I've seen the demo of the product myself from my uh, team, and they've showed it to me, and they were, did all of the management of the product was actually done within the vSphere UI, which is great. So easy to go and just enter the vSphere UI, install the product very simply, have it up and running, and then go and do all of your uh, management in, uh, through that user interface, or to automate it using the same APIs that you're used to through VMware and the Tenzu uh, um, platform. Thank you. Parasar, back to you. Security is a big theme here in Kubernetes. It's also been a big theme here. We've been talking about it the last three days here at KubeCon. How does Dell EMC's unstructured portfolio offer that necessary cyber protection that developers need to have and bake that into what they're doing? Sure, Lisa. You know, when we talk about cybersecurity, you know, there are different layers of, of uh, security, right? From, you know, smarter firewalls to, you know, uh, how to manage privilege account access and so on. And what we are trying to do is to provide a layer of cyber defense right at the asset that you're trying to protect, which is the data. And this is where uh, the ransomware defender solution is basically detecting any patterns of, of a compromise that might have happened and alerting the IT um, administration about these um, possible um, intrusions into, their, uh, into the data by looking at the data access patterns in real time. So that's a pretty big deal when we are actually putting all these you know, um, um, observance uh, on the uh, primary data. Uh, and that's what the power scale platform uh, cybersecurity protection features offers. Now we have also extended this kind of detection mechanism for the object data framework on ECS platforms as well. So this is like an additional layer of security at the um, layer of, uh, you know, where the data is actually being read and written to. That's the area, you know, in case of object, we are, we are looking at the S3 traffic and trying to find these patterns. Uh, in case of, of file data access, we are looking at the file uh, access patterns and so on. So 
And, and in addition to this, we are also providing uh, a, a data isolation mechanism that is very critical in many cyber recovery processes with the smart air gap solution as well. So this is something that the developers are getting for like without having to worry about it because that is something implemented at the infrastructure layer itself. So they don't have to worry about uh, you know, uh, trying to you know, code it or you know, develop their application to integrate with these kinds of things because it's, an, it's embedded in the infrastructure at the uh, 1FS API level, at the ECS API level. So that's pretty, um, pretty um, differentiating in the industry if you look at the storage solutions out there today. You mentioned, if I, if oh, I could go ahead, David. In there. Uh, yeah, so I mean, look, if you look at what a lot of the object storage players are doing as it relates to cybersecurity, they're, they're playing off the fact that they've implemented object lock and, and basically using that to lock down data. And that's that's good. I mean, I'm glad that they're doing that. And if the case that you were able to lock something down and someone wasn't able to bypass that in some way, that's fantastic. Or if they didn't already encrypt it before it got locked down. What, what Parasar is referring to is a little bit more than that. It's actually the ability to look at user behavior and, and determine that something bad is happening. So this is about actually being able to do you know, predictive analytics, being able to go and figure out that you're under attack, there's uh, anomalous behavior, um, and we're able to go and actually infer from that that something bad is happening and where we think it's happening and lock it down even, even more uh, securely than, for example, just saying, hey, we provide object lock capabilities, which is one of the responses that I've seen out there from object storage vendors. Can you share with us, Parser, a customer example? Like, walk us through how this is actually being used and deployed and what some of those business outcomes are. Yes, Lisa. So in terms of uh, containerization itself, uh, we have a media and entertainment uh, kind of a customer story here. Um, Swiss TXT, um, they have a platform as a service um, where they uh, serve their customer base with a range of uh, you know, uh, media production and broadcasting solutions. And they have containerized this platform. And part of this containerization is part of their services is they offer infrastructure as a service to you know, media producers who need a high performance storage, high performance compute and PowerScale and Isilon have been their go-to solutions to offer this. And now that they have containerized their core platform with the CSI interface for PowerScale, they are able to continue to deliver this infrastructure, uh, high performance infrastructure and storage services to their customers through the API. And it's great to see how fast they could, you know, refactor their application, but yet continue to offer the high performance enterprise, uh, enterprise grade uh, features of the PowerScale platform. So Swiss TXT and uh, would love to share more details of the story uh, in, in a hyperlink or something. And where can folks go to learn more about object scale and what you guys are announcing? Particular URL website that you want to direct folks to? I would say delltechnologies.com, and uh, that's the best place to start. Yeah, we'll go to the Delta product pages around object scale. It should be publicly available. Excellent. Guys, thank you for joining me on the program today, walking through what how Dell EMC is helping developers with respect to unstructured data, talking to us about object skill that you launched at VMworld, some of those big customer benefits, and of course, showing us the validation, the proof in the pudding with that customer story. We appreciate your insights. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. For my guests, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from Los Angeles. We're coming to you from our coverage of KubeCon and Cloud Native on North America 21. Coming back, stick around rather, I should say. We'll be back after a short break with our next guest.